Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today what we are doing is disconnecting and removing this pod point charger as my client is moving home. We are going to carry out a survey and install it at the new property, so this one is a good one to watch if you have an electric vehicle charging point and you want to take it with you when you're moving home. So what we have at this existing installation is the pod point charger, which comes into this IP rated consumer unit, Copex into the meter box where we have a 100 amp isolator, which you can't see, but it's there. CT clamp for the load management and they just used a bit of high tough cable with external grade cat5 for the CT clamp. At the new installation we will obviously put the pod point back up, we're going to put a new IP rated consumer unit in and use EV ultra cable rather than running two cables from the charger. Okay, so that's the pod point now disconnected and removed from this property in a couple of days time i'm carrying out a survey at the new property see what's involved with that it is a new build so that should be interesting so i mentioned in part one that this may be an interesting video to watch because i've done installs on this new estate before where the consuming and the meter box is actually in the middle of the house under the stairs and i've had to get an ev ultra cable through one of the rooms to an external wall to install the charger when I'm installing Copex into a meter box is I fix a box lid inside and I've got something solid to gland my Copex into. Another thing I always do is just mastic up any fixing holes that I make just to improve that IP rating. I don't want water getting in here. So in this pod point charger, we have the main terminations here at the top. We have the CT terminations down here at the bottom. And regarding to commissioning, this one should be relatively easy because my client has taken the router from the old house to this house, so it should pair up lovely.
So one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video was purely because I appreciate how much these EV charging point installations cost. And it is a big investment. So it's important for you to know that if you do move, move house, you can take it with you. Now, obviously you're gonna have to pay someone to disconnect and remove your charger and install it at the new property and go through the DNO application again. But what you don't have to do is obviously pay for a new charger. So there's um, you know, a lot of people online talking about whether an EV charging point puts value on your house. I'm not so sure about this, but I think, you know, if you, if you take a charger out of someone's house and you leave the infrastructure there if you can, so the new charger just needs to be mounted on the wall, terminated, commissioned, um, then you know that might add a bit of value. But if it was me and I'd invested in like a Pod Point or an Anderson, a Zappi or a Hypervolt, I'd probably take it with me. So I'm just running through my dead test now. I'm gonna do my R1, R2. I'm just testing the continuity. And then I will mega through my cable, make sure that's all clear. So I've got to be honest with you, this is actually my second visit back here. I came here a couple of days ago, but on my way I went to a very popular wholesalers, I won't say which one, who have a very good online store and they were showing 75 linear clips in stock and when I got there they didn't have any. So. I got part of this installation done and then I spoke to my client and I explained that I don't have linear clips but I've got cable cleats and I'd rather not continue with the installation until I had some linear clips which is slightly inconvenient for the client but I just prefer to do a better job so now we have them and we can carry on. Also with this installation with the meter being on the outside wall, you may have guessed that the consumer unit is actually just on the other side of this wall. But my client didn't want me drilling through the wall or making any damage really aesthetically to the inside of the property. It's a brand new house and they've just moved in. So I completely understand and you need to take that into account when you're carrying out these installations. And that is why we're doing the IP rated consumer unit on the outside. So I had an inquiry this week um, for a gentleman who was moving house and he has a Tesla and he wanted a new charging point at the new property. Now he explained to me the existing property, he's just got a commando socket. Um, he explained it as a commando socket and a cable just came out of the meter box and that's how he was charging his Tesla and I, I said I wasn't happy to do that at the new property. So you know, I've done some research and I recently watched a video on the eFix channel on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen it. If you haven't, check it out. It's really good and informative. And they actually just done a video on it yesterday or the day before. And the thing is, if you have just a commando socket, you don't have any smart capabilities. You need to still install uh, pen fault protection. You still need to install, obviously, a Type A RCD. There's lots of things, contrib contributing factors. And when you add all them costs up, you might as well put a proper charger in where you have at least app compatibility and you can see what's going on. But um, I'm gonna go and look at the job anyway on the weekend and I'll, I'll let you know how I get on with that. It's a really gray area to be honest and personally I'm not prepared to do it. So that is my answer and I'm obviously gonna price to put in a proper charger because I'm just not going to put my name to a commando socket where there's too many grey areas and I don't want to be held 
accountable for anything that's wrong. These little consumer units, they are quite tight to work in. But I do have here a B4E Type A double pole RCD along with surge protection. So that's the requirements met. And the pod point charger has uh, pen fault protection, so that's fine. Um, we've got a TNCS earthing system here on a 100 amp fuse, so that's fine. The gas has been bonded, I can show you that later if I get round to it. And they have a plastic water pipe going into the property, so not too concerned about that bonding situation. my RCD tested. So this pod point installation is all finished now, so I'm going to run you through the whole job and show you what I've done. So here we have the new Hendy block installed. We've got a new earth block installed here. And then as we look down, this is where my 25mm Copex comes into the meter box. And like I showed you earlier, I drilled my holes and then I put a 25mm hole in a box lid, secure that and then my copex is completely fixed. I've seen other installations where copex are just poking in through to the meter cupboard box and it, I just think it looks rubbish. So this is the way to do it. If you have a better idea please let me know. Here we have the IP rated consumer unit. Inside there we have the surge protection, the B40 Type A double pole RCD all labelled up. It's quite a nice little board to be honest. And then out the bottom we have the Copex which I'll try and show you. And from the consumer unit as you can see we have the EV Ultra cable clipped with linear clips. Nice and straight along the wall to the charging point. As always, thanks for watching again. Uh, please hit that thumbs up button, like and subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram.